Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima. One or two things you may have noticed, or just one really. One, I took a really, really long time to get this video done, and I really do apologize. But unfortunately, a lot of things seemed to stack on top of each other, which prevented me to get into this game. One was that I wasn't able to get a copy until release day. Well, actually two days over release day. Two, my internet broke down, so I couldn't really test out anything, couldn't really record anything, couldn't really upload anything. The fact that I got my Ragnarok Odyssey video uploaded was a miracle. And three, got the got a copy of Ragnarok Odyssey Ace the same day I got this. So it was a bit of a pick of the litter, and I went for the one that wasn't really out yet. To be perfectly honest, I really should have gone with this and Dynasty Warriors. But anyway, anyway, anyway. This is Deception 4 Blood Ties. Very bare bones menu. A lot of this game is a bare... A lot of this game is fairly bare bones, actually. Let's just have a quick look at the options. You can change the text for some reason, and that's the only option in the system. Got different sliders. I, I always like that, although the sound balancing seems to be fine in this game. You can change all the typical camera stuff, which is pretty nice. You can turn off the trap hit camera if you want to turn it off, which is pretty cool. You can turn off reaction icons, it's pretty nice, and you can change your sets of controls, which is, again, it's fine, but the defaults work just fine the way they are. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at story real quick, and then we'll go through the other modes. Story is actually the least impressive mode out of all of these things, because, well, it's got a few problems with it, let's just say. So, first thing we're going to do is look at Unbind Diabolica. Now, when you play a stage... You gain XP in three different types of trap XP. You get both elab or you get elaborate, you get sadistic, and you get humiliating. Elaborate, sadistic, and humiliating are all different types of traps. And that's a gigantic yo-yo, isn't it? I must have it. And at the end of each story mode stage, you get a ton of... Well, not a ton, but you get walk, and you also get experience for all that... You also get um, experience for all the different types of traps, and you also get walk, which is basically your money. And so you can go and buy all sorts of different traps with it, with the money that you have. I won't bother buying any more traps. Could if I wanted to. Ooh, actually I like this. Let's, let's grab it. So, and we can also unbind abilities. I've already unbinded two of them. Uh, there's dash which move, moves fast, our protection, which pr produces a barrier that protects you from all afflictions, and an enraging beam, which makes enemies really pissed up. You know, that would actually be really useful. Damn it! <laughs> wow, okay. And you've also got costumes, but I haven't unlocked any of those yet. I'm only up to chapter 5, which is only like two chapters into the second area. There's a, fa there's a fairly good reason for it. I'm not going to say it's... You know, not out entirely out of my hands, but yeah, there's a reason for that. And we can also come in here to change our Diabolica. It's kind of a cool name, actually. Diabolica. Oh, most of these are ceiling traps, aren't they? Okay, so we'll get rid of the... Actually, no, I kind of like the Brutal blood, the brutal Buzz Saw. Excuse me. Uh, we'll get rid of the Needle Nasty and replace it with the Circular Saw. And we'll get rid of the Claw and put the Mega, Mo Mega Yo-Yo in, because those are actually kind of cool. And, yeah, we'll get rid of the bear trap and we'll put up the iron rake, because why the hell not? And we've also got abilities. I've got a fair few already here. Uh, and I've currently got auto defense, recovery, and paralyzing rave. Rave. Paralyzing rave, yeah. Everybody starts, what, having sex and then all of a sudden you just can't move. Okay. So... We got rolling order defense. Uh, I like using recovery, recovery and paralyzing wave because paralyzing wave is really good at making enemies just stop exactly where they need to be. But you need to be really good with using it and recovery, which is well, yeah, restore your health completely three times. With how much I suck at this game, I need it. And all I've got is this one costume. I believe Jim Sterling, Jim Sterling said this is the first occasion where he ever had to use the word ass cleavage, and I completely and utterly agree. Look at that ass cleavage. Holy hell, I never thought I would see a costume which would justify the two words ass and cleavage being next to each other in the same sentence. And I love it. I really do. I'm a closet pervert, didn't you know? And we can also go to our data here. Check my Legrina. Le 
And, yep, as you can see, my entirety of earned arc points, my wall points, or my money, as they say, and all my different types of XP. We can also check the info on the enemies coming in, but I'll do that as we go in through the game. We can check our demon requests, but again, I'll explain them through the game. And we've got the capture collection. The capture collection is quite fascinating because there are, in some circumstances, you can catch some of the people that come in and try and kill you. And so you have to build up a bit of a collection of that. Unfortunately, I don't know if it gives any sort of bonuses or anything like that, so I don't know. And just to be safe, we'll save the game. I don't know what it is with Ragnarok Odyssey Ace taking so long to save, because this game just works fine. So we're just going to start a story mission right here. Now, again, I've played four chapters of this, and the method has been exactly the same every time. It started out with one of these. It is a text crawl with a Japanese VA that just tells a simple story, but I'll just I'll skip this and get straight to the gameplay. So you are Le Grinner. That's a very odd name, I agree. And you are the devil's demonic daughter. A little bit of added alliterative appeal for you there. And you are being attacked. You are being attacked by several people who are attempting to risk, um, grab some holy verses off you. These holy verses, if all 13 come together, they will bring the devil back and they obviously want to stop that. Alright, so when a new enemy comes in, you can press triangle to activate your demon eye or devil eye. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to monologue there. This tells you a little bit about the name, um, the affiliation and the occupation of everybody. But also it tells you something a little bit more important. It gives you resistances and invulnerabilities. Everything in this game has a set type of element to it. Whether it be drops from the ceiling, comes up from the floor, comes from the wall, anything like that. And as you can see, this guy's resistant to boulders, stuff coming from the wall, and he's completely invulnerable to anything that sucks in in any way. Probably because he's so heavy. And as you can see, there's a fair few different things here, so... Yeah, there's a fair few different things that can be different, and you have to plan your traps around them. And these sorts of guys I like a fair amount, because... They're simple enough to actually estimate... To, you know, to plan around their movements. And this guy has is a Storm Mage, and he has a complete invulnerability to Lightning, which is to be expected. Alright, so... We are playing De Deception 4 Blood Ties at this point. I'm going to turn around and r run away. Yeah, that's just me, alright. So, uh, just while I'm running away, we'll press start. We can also check this little heads-up display here on this little map on the side. F for some reason, this the cursor saves its position in this menu. So, if I go down to return to menu, then press start again, it will automatically have that selected. So, if I'm thinking I want to go to data, I might accidentally scroll down to retry and have retried before I even realize what I'm doing. I don't like that very much. But you can also come back come back in here to check the data on the enemies if you need to. No big deal. You can also check your player info again, but I don't know why you do that in the middle of a fight. You can also press square to check the demon requests. Now, these demons are your friends, and they often ask you to do specific things, like Kalia, Verusa, and Lilia. All, again, they're all based off the three different types of traps. There's... Christ, I can't even remember them now. Never mind, I said them earlier. The, yeah, the elaborate, the sadistic, and the um, humiliating. So, we get told to go to any of these rooms, and then they will give us extra XP for those elements, so it's kind of nice to follow their instructions as much as possible. So, for example, I've gotten some sadistic points here. Okay, so now she's given me another goal. Drop an enemy into the river of molten lava. And to do that, I have to knock him in there. So when you press circle anytime during the game, you get the trap screen. I've gone trap four slots unlocked at this point, and you can also go and check out the stage trap info. So I can activate the mold transporter by a switch, and the blast furnace ignores defenses and fire, and it has special different types of movement. So you can check the, the room that you're in, what traps it has at that time, which is pretty neat. So, now let's actually put out some traps. We've got all sorts of different types of traps here, and they all comply to one of the three elements. Elaborate, sadistic, and humiliating. So what we're going to do, we're going to put down a swinging axe and see if we can knock one of these guys coming after us into the lava. 
Now, every trap has a charge, an arc, and a damage amount, and an amount of time it takes... Well, yeah, the charge is the amount of time it takes to actually charge up. So what we're going to do is we're going to put down a few traps here, just to ha make sure we have more than one option. And we're going to have an Iron Rake, because why not? If I can put it down somewhere, there we go. We're just going to let all them charge up. Now, every trap has a specific amount of time it needs to charge up. Okay, here comes our big guy. Let's see if we can knock him in. Yes! We got a good hit, and he is on fire! Now you may have noticed the camera swapping to the guy falling into the trap there, and down he comes from there. And there's the other guy. So the... And I just got a ton of statistic XP. Also, every trap combo earns you XP towards both just general money earning, and just... Yeah, just general... Yeah, sorry. I completely lost my train of thought there. So, the idea is we want to try and trigger all these traps in order to uh, trap an enemy and make him do stupid shit like that. And the more hits you get in one combo, obviously the more points you're going to get. And so you obviously want to try and get more, more points. And the AI isn't isn't stupid, but sometimes I feel like that's kind of the problem with this game. But to be fair, I can explain why later on. It is a bit obvious what the main problem is with this game. I don't know if they could have prevented it, but I don't know. I'll just set off another trap and there we go. Whatever. Alright, so come get me, big guy. Come on. Where are ya? Crap, I missed him. Hello. Here, try and hit me. Nope, he's not going to hit me the way I want him to. There. Nice dodge. Rake. As you can see, he's actually been enraged right now, so that means he's he'll actually be really stupid and ignore traps. I will admit, I haven't been using the enraging aspect of this game so much. But as you can see, three hit combo right into the lava. I quite like being able to pull that off. And that's the main point of this game, to get all the combos you need off traps. Or to get, to get combos off traps and get lots of points for it, I should say. And it's kind of hard to do with enemies that are beyond the, just the typical amount of intelligence. He's probably going to die in a minute. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> Okay, that was bad. That was really bad. Yep, Wesley just died face down in the lava. And out I come. Get away from me, bitch. Wrong way. So, just for the hell of it, I'm going to go to another room. Got another person coming in. They us you usually get an introduction to them via a cutscene. Okay. Let's see if we can... We're not going to make this work, are we? Paralyzing wave, real quick. There we go. That'll give me time to set up two traps. And I think I need to use a blast bomb here because if I don't use a blast bomb, nothing else will charge up fast enough. That way you go. And... Oh! Oh, Jesus! She fell into a... She fell into the bomb that copter is flying around and letting off. Yes! Awesome! And I even got 1,200 elaborate points for it. Shame I didn't actually have that goal, but okay. I didn't even mean to time it like that. It just happened. There are also different interactive elements, as you can see, that are flying around the stage. It's like that one there. Sometimes they can you can interact with them if you do it correctly, and sometimes you'll just get your ass kicked. See, I didn't even intend for that. That just happened. See, the AI can be really smart, but it can be really dumb at the same time. It can start to get frustrating after a while. Especially when it's like... Alright, I think it's about time I explained how the, the story mode in this game actually works. So basically, it is a set of about three fights, at least three fights maximum, with a bunch of soldiers each. And then after that, it's... Let's, let's put it this way. It'd be a fight like this, and another fight like this, and another fight, but at the end of that fight, there's, there would be something along the lines of a really strong person who either 
you need to take down one combo undenied because if you don't, they will heal up. Or there will be something like... Something like... What am I thinking? There will be something like a guy with really, really lots of health and he'll be able to dodge your traps like nobody's business. So you have to plan around not only where he is but where he's going to be and they can jump around pretty randomly. And this makes the game feel a lot harder than it really should be. I mean, if the if their jumps and attempts at evasion were a little bit more predictable, but to me they feel completely random and it kind of annoys me. So yeah, you end up dealing with all the healing enemies, all the strong enemies or whatever, and it again after that it just it, it gets boring. I mean, like even about five chapters in at this point. I'm, st I'm, I'm kind of bored of the story mode. That was one battle. But then in the story mode, you'll have one or two more battles each. And the thing is, if you don't finish a chapter, you can't save. So you have to do these three battles end on end. And if you get stuck, like, on the final battle and want to take a break, you can't take a break. Because if you take a break and you end up, like, closing the game... Oh, by the way, here's a demonstration for you. Long range troop. Got a crossbow in her hand, and she's not afraid to use it, even though for some reason she's not even moving. Now she is. Run. Just zigzagging to avoid that. So. The story mode gets a bit boring, especially when you have to grind against the final boss to figure out how to beat them without actually taking a break. Because if you do anything more than put the PS Vita in standby, you're not going to get very far. Let's, yeah, let's bring out the Mega Yo-Yo, see if we can get that to work. Uh, anything else? So... If they made it so that you'd be able to save on the final battle of any particular chapter, I'd be kind of alright with that. Yo-Yo! <laughs> and in you go. Wait, what? Excuse me, you're supposed to be on fire... Shit! Shit! <laughs> oh, that ain't good. That ain't good at all. And I imagine all the traps that are coming up are probably like really cool traps with all sorts of different bonuses and effects and all that. It's just, I'm going to have to play through the story to unlock them all. I don't really want to do that because as soon as I get stuck on a hard fight, I know I'm going to be spending a few hours there with no break to play any other Vita games. I wish they would patch that in. Please, for the love of God, Koei, if you're listening, please patch in the ability to try a fight again later instead of having to make repeat the entire goddamn chapter. So I'm on the second fight, so you can, you'll be able to tell. You'll, you'll be able to tell if... Let me try that again. You'll be able to tell that I won't be able to save. So you'll be able to see for yourself how silly this whole thing feels. Hello. Paralyzing... Son of a bitch. Wrong button. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Paralyzing wave. And... Swing. And what does this do again? Okay, yeah, I kind of missed with that. I'm probably just going to let myself die here, because you get the idea of the story mode. I... I will show off one of the, like, really strong bosses, because that's one of the weird things about this game. You can actually show those off in a quite odd way, and, yep, at least at least Brooke died before I got my ass handed to me. But see, if I return to the top menu for this mode... Like, did you notice that I did the th one of the three goals there? Yeah, it's gone now. I, I have to go back to the Melwork room, I have to start the entire chapter all over again. That's really, really frustrating. Really, really frustrating why you can't go to the final fight, especially when the final fights are actually really frustrating. So, uh, so yeah. Unfortunately, on that basis alone, I can't recommend this game because it's going to frustrate the hell out of like 90% of the people who play it. Why the hell can you not save in between battles? Instead of having to do entire chapters in one sitting, especially when the final battles of each chapter are like a huge difficulty spike over what came before it. It pisses me off to no end, I'm sorry. I guess you unlock more traps as the story goes on. You could probably 
could probably grind traps out of playing like... Like, hold on, what's this down here? Yeah, you could probably grind traps out of going and playing other modes. Possibly, and then when you have the better traps, you can come back and see if you could do more story missions. Still, that seems a bit unnecessary when you could just let people save and figure it out later. I don't know. Alright, so that was a story mode. That was a base example of it. I don't really need to show you that much more. It's just a harder battle. So we've got a free battle. Alright, as I promised, we'll, we'll just do this quickly. I'll show off the first one of the first areas. Enemy settings. We'll pick one of the really hard ones, so... Does it count if you've seen them, or do you have to defeat them? Oh, no, okay, so we can we have to have them defeated. So this is Gallier, and he's got healing, and he's also got a really long health bar, so I'll be able to show this off. And you can set whatever Diabolica you have as your typical Diabolica. Let's just hit start. And I'll show off the other modes in a moment, just to show you how annoying some of these bosses can be. And remember, they're usually flanked by one or two other people, so you have to plan around all three of them. But thankfully, in this case, I don't have to do that. So yeah, this is one of the boss guys. He's the boss in level 4. So we have to plan around his attack. Make a yo-yo, because why not? Alright, so I've paralyzed him. And I'll hit him with this. See, so now he's lost a little bit of health. Problem is, I can only put four traps down right now. I don't know if it's a story restriction that makes you put four of these down, but... Yep, see, he's gone and healed. So you have to... You have to keep the pressure on, and on some of these guys, this can be really annoying. And then you've got the guys that can literally just jump all over the place. Literally avoiding every trap you've put down, even though by all rights they really shouldn't know what the hell is going to happen to them, because you've just put them down like a demonic girl you are. It just doesn't make any sense to me, that's all. For people who like planning, planning around really inconsistent AI, I guess is the best word I can use for it. I don't know, you'll probably enjoy this a lot. There are several demographics this game will appeal to, I'll admit that. So let's just return to the menu at this point. I don't think I've got anything else to show you related to this. So yeah, this is a game for people who like hard stuff, and here comes some more proof of it. We've got missions! Now these missions are actually the highlight of the game, and I wish they were all unlocked at the very beginning. So basically what the idea is, is that these missions are all timed and you have to beat them within the time limit and they've all got their own 1 to 5 star difficulty rate. Or make, yeah, make that, is that 5? Yeah, that's 5. So they've all got their own 1 to 5 star difficulty. I'm pretty sure you have to progress through the story to get more of them, which really, really annoys me for some reason. I've only unlocked the first 10, as you can see. So there are different sets of missions. So... There's this one here, you've got one enemy, and score at least a thousand elaborate points. Defeat the enemy without taking any damage whatsoever. Earn at least 1,000 arc, finish off an enemy with the stage, with the stages thing, and ha have four hits in one combo. Yeah, and you have to do it in about, like, two minutes. Unfortunately, it's the load time that kind of kisses the game's ass here. I hope they patch this. Allow them to save mid-save, um, mid-save, mid-mid-save, mid-chapter. And allow for bloody... Bloody how my shoulder is annoying me. Uh, and have a bloody low time reduction. Because sometimes the load times can get really annoying when retrying challenges. So let's pick one. Uh, elaborate points. Sadistic points. Alright, we'll go for this. Yeah, these load times kind of annoy you. When you have, like, 60 second stages and then you have to, like, restart with those sorts of loading times. Okay, so we've got Bridget, who is an archer with 115 health. And we've got 120 seconds to score a thousand statistic points. Let's see what we can do, shall we? What else do we have? We can put a br brutal buzzsaw on that wall. For the hell of it.
Now there's gotta wait for these to charge up. Bring up Oh god, I managed to stun myself with my own chair, that's not good. Right, come on, get up, thank you. Let's retry that, because that's that is actually not the trap I wanted to use. I wanted to use the lethal lance. Wow, I'm an idiot. So yeah, these, these miniature stages are the most fun in the game because it doesn't feel anywhere near as repetitive and you really have to think about what you're going to do with your traps in order to get the job done. And that's kind of a relief in this game because it honestly feels like... It honestly feels like... God, sorry. It honestly feels like that the story mode is nothing but exploiting the enemy AI to get through it as fast as possible because there's no real redeeming value in it other than a really, really long tutorial. Unnecessarily long, in fact. But, when it's something like this, it's actually kind of fun. Because you can... Because you get to plan out your moves and you get to do all sorts of stuff and it's really quite enjoyable to figure out the exact traps you need to do. Crap. Unfortunately, I didn't get what I wanted to do. Weird, I wonder why that doesn't count as sadistic. Hmm. I wonder what does count as sadistic in this level. You would think a bloody giant guillotine will count as sadistic in this level. But yeah, I, I like this a lot better than the story mode. I can understand people might think that, that this sort of thing would be fulfilled by demon requests. But still. Let's see, what... Does anything in this... Yeah, that counts as sadistic, but it only... It only gets 95 points, really? That's a bit disappointing. The electric chairs get 60. Hmm. That's a that's a bit odd to me. I, I wonder why that is. You know, I'm not really sure how, how you'd be able to pull this off with your default set of traps. Huh. Oh, well, we'll give it one more try. Oh, is that in... Huh. No, I want I want to use the lethal lance first against the wall. Then I want to use the swinging axe to give her a little bit of a push. And then I want to use the circular saw to push her up onto that. Oh, bollocks, I did it again. And I got shot in the process, too. All right, come here. That missed! Oh, come on! That's annoying as hell. Come on, come over here. Yeah, mission failed. I'm not sure how you'd be able to pull that off with the default set of traps. Okay, that kind of sucks. Maybe there's some something something I'm missing, I don't know. But yeah, the missions are the best part of this game. Unfortunately, you have to play through the story mode to do it. So, there's one more thing we can talk about. Not only can you make your own quests, you can also download quests and upload quests to the internet for other people to play. Unfortunately, this is limited in similar, well, not similar ways, but, you know, the rest of the game's limited in some way, and this this part of the game's limited in some way as well. So we can download quests. Yes, I am on half battery, I know. Also, funnily enough, you can't run internet while playing this game. It's kind of annoying. Oh, as you can see, I have... I've uploaded my... Th a quest here. I don't know why mine came up at the very top. You would think I wouldn't want to download mine, but whatever. We can also check the highest rated. Unfortunately, you can't really personalize these quests in any meaningful way. You have to kind of... As you can see, I've already saved one bit of quest data here. 
you can't customize these in any meaningful way. You can only just upload them and have a little subtitle, which is like from a predetermined list of ten. So let's let's start one of the the, the quests I just downloaded. Oh, I've already downloaded another quest just to try this mode out. So let's say say see. Uh, God, I can't read that. I'm sorry. What did that just say? In one combo, hit the enemy with five or more stage traps? Really? How the hell can you do that? Maybe you can, like, chain together, like, ten different traps eventually? Because, good lord, I can't imagine hitting five traps right out of the bloody gate. Jeez. Who the hell is this? Haven't seen her yet. And she's got healing and giant health. Wonderful. Okay, so this is a new area. Haven't been here before. I've, I've only been up to the second area. This is nothing like this. Uh, hit the enemy with five stage traps. How the bloody hell are you supposed to... You know what? Screw it. Let's just return to the menu and play that other quest I downloaded. Because how the bloody hell are you supposed to pull that off without getting a gigantic mission failed in your face a hundred bloody times? This game is difficult. This game is indeed difficult. Let's try this one instead. Defeat all enemies! That'll do! And then I'll show off creating a cross quest and then... Yeah. And then we'll just call this video to an end. Alright, so... Oh! Oh god, I remember this. Yeah, see what I mean by guys that can move around really freaking quickly and just jump all over the place and you can't really plan your traps around them? Yeah, here's one of them. Some people really are jerks. I'm guessing the game expects me to be at a higher trap level before I beat this guy, but even so, this is just like... This is honestly... Oh, that freaking electric chair. Girl, up, 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 run, X. Yeah, see, this guy can dodge, like, traps from the ceiling. Can do over half my health in one jump attack from a really far distance away. Like, seriously, what what is this guy actually not immune to? Hold on, data, enemy info... Yeah! This guy isn't very easy to beat at all! Wow. Yeah, let's just forget that. So yeah, you can... As you can see, you can download quests. And you can... Well, let's just have a look at uploading quests. Because obviously I suck too much of the ones I download. So let's create a quest. As you can see, I've already created one here. But we'll just go through all the obvious things here. We can change the stage settings. Obviously, you can only pick from stages you've been to, so we'll might as well take this somewhere... We'll take this to the chapel so I can show off one of the really big traps that I actually really like. We can change the enemy settings, so let's just get rid of these two so we just have Oliver in there, but... As we can see, every enemy I've defeated so far, you, you can use. It's... An interesting selection. It's a shame you can't make your own people with their own... You know... Um, invulnerabilities and resistances and make people plan around one specific type of thing. But then again, it's probably a really big character variety to force that anyway. And we can set the conditions. Defeat all enemies, land an X hit combo, earn a minimum of X arc, earn no more than X arc. That would be difficult. Clear the quest without taking damage in one combo, hit the enemy with three or more stage traps. Finish off an enemy using a stage trap. Yeah, you get the idea. It's the same sort of goals you play in the story mode. So yeah, we can make this clear the quest within 100 seconds to defeat all the enemies. And again, you have to use the traps that you can buy. The missions actually let you set the specific Diabolica that you have to use, and that kind of makes them more defined and detailed than these cross quests. Shame, really. You know, this game has a lot of potential, but it keeps falling short in the oddest of places to fall short. Alright. So let's actually just start this cross quest and, you know, actually beat it. So I don't look like a complete and utter fool, even though this will probably just be a one-hit kill using a stage trap. 
Also, I've noted that you can't really set the places that the enemies start out in, so he's going to come running towards me. And the stage trap I want to activate is actually over here, so I kind of need to get it, draw him over here. You can also hit these switches here with different items. Yep, so he's dead. And that was just a quick example of a music quest. There are little intricacies with this game, like... There are these little tricks you can use, like hitting those switches is actually possible with freaking... Oh, you do get the option to actually save your quests if you successfully play them. And it, it might be easy to actually build a sort of quest where it's really easy to grind, walk, and experience for all sorts of traps, so you can really, really quickly get to the higher end traps and then just blaze through the game, which would be the optimal way to play, in my opinion. And with just a quick look at the museum, you can check the records of both you and every stage in the story, and I just, I really wish I could, you know, just skip the story. Apparently there's multiple endings, don't know how you pull that off. And you can also see how you killed every enemy. Kill a lot of people with boulders. You can also uh, save replay data on missions that aren't story missions, which is kind of odd. I didn't actually know this existed. And you can also... I didn't know this existed because I played story most of the time, and then when I played a mission, I was like, oh shit, I can save replays. So, we can connect to PSN... Get a list of replays, download a replay, and we can have a look for ourselves. I, again, unfortunately, there's not much here to, like, tell me what's so special about these. So, we'll, we'll just have to pick one at random and hope that whatever it is, it's actually kind of a good combo. So, we'll pick Newbie Chris here. This won't be absolute ass. See if we can download his replay. Hope my internet doesn't drop out, like, right here, because that would be really freaking annoying. Alright, come on, any time now, please. 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 Ugh. Come on, I have my own shit to do. Come on. Christ, I should have downloaded a few replays before I did this video. Ah, uh, screw it. Alright, whatever. Come on. Please, stop. Oh. Oh god, it actually finished downloading it. Okay. Okay, so let's actually go and have a look at that replay now and... Saving the system data. Now let's actually go and look at that replay. Let's see if this guy did any decent combos. Just for the hell of it. I've got nothing better to do. Might as well talk about my feelings over someone else's much more advanced gameplay. Yeah. I will admit that this game has a lot of potential. And a lot of, and there are people out here who would like this game. And to be fair, if you've watched this video and you haven't liked my complaining and thought, well, yeah, yeah no. Oh, he's not going to do exactly what I just did. Oh, he is! He is! Wait, no, he's actually going to make this look kind of impressive. Please, please, please. Okay, yeah, he actually made that look kind of impressive. Alright, good job. Again, this game has a ton of potential, and with a little bit of patching put into it, you know, to fix some of the problems with it, like the really erratic AI, and the not being allowed to save between chapters, and, you know, just a couple of other tiny little things, this game could be really, really good, but... It's a bit too hard, a bit too repetitive, and a bit too... You know, just grindy for my tastes. And, well, not much else i got to say there. Also, leaderboard. So, you know, not even going to bother showing that. It's a goddamn leaderboard. What else do you want? 
You know, this game would have done great as like a $20 digital download title. If it was that, I would have been able to excuse it for a lot more, but as a full $40 game where I don't want to play the story any further because the boss battles are really hard and I can't... I can't save at them and I have to go through another 20-30 minute slog with a specific set of traps in order to get to it. And with that being the main mode of the game, with only the missions and cross quests feeling more supplemental than anything else, even though they're supposed to really be the sort of content that keeps it going past the story mode, I can't help but be a bit disappointed. Maybe when the bugs are fixed and they drop the price a little bit, and they make, maybe rebalance the story mode to make it a little bit easier, along with being able to save in between chapters so it's not a pain in the ass. It would be much better if I could change my trap set between chapters, so I could, not between chapters, between individual battles in a chapter, so I would be able to pick out my best trap set for taking out the big guys. But I can't. I have to stick with the same trap set that I take on the first mission, the second mission, but and then the third mission with the boss in it. It just... I know I'm harping on that one point, but it is really, really a pain. I'm not sure what else I have to say. Potentially good game, probably only for people who like the idea of it. There are frustrations, many frustrations. But if someone just casually came up to me and said, would you buy this game with no any sort of context around it? I would probably tell them no. Wait for a price drop. This has been Blue Maxima. Oh yeah, I've been on a new microphone, by the way. Have you been able to tell? I'll see you all next time.